Hello everybody. Right, bit of a different one this time. Did you know that there's a tunnel which is big enough to drive a car through that goes from the River Tyne to the River Tees? I want to take you up to Kielder Reservoir, which is in the north of Northumberland, just before the Scottish border. Now, why are we going up here? Well, as some of you may know, there was a village, school houses, where this reservoir was made, and the people in that area had to be taken from their houses but fortunately for them, they built them new ones, and while there was a bit of sadness about losing their old properties, they were mostly quite pleased about the move to the new ones, and they're still there to this day. However, what we want to talk about is something slightly different, because while Kielder costs many millions to make, at the same time a different project was going on, and that was the Tyne to Tees Tunnel, the longest tunnel in the UK but you won't find a Wikipedia page about it, because it seems that it's been rather forgotten about, and Kielder itself overshadowed the tunnel. But the construction of it is quite phenomenal. They put a tunnel from the River Tyne through the Pennine Range to the River Tees. Now this was made to feed the industry in Middlesbrough, which, as you probably know, collapsed not long after. So the tunnel still sits there, and I thought it would be fun if we went and found it. So... After a long walk along a very muddy riverbank that had no path, we finally come to the start of the tunnel at Riding Mill, which is just down the river towards Newcastle from Hexham. And as you can see, it is a very large pumping centre that comes out of the river. It has signs warning canoeists not to go near the edge of the tunnel and is very much off the beaten track. So we thought that we'd have a little explore and see what there is to see at this end of the tunnel. So, climbing up another muddy bank, we come to the entrance of the complex, which has this very interesting underground area that you can just about make out here. It has huge blast doors on it, and goes under this field, which seems to have breathers to let air into some sort of complex underneath the field. So the tunnel's construction in the 1970s took six years to build, and this is the complex that controls it. We didn't see any signs of life while we were wandering around this. Um, there was a stile, and it seemed like an invitation that we could go in here and have a look around. So, we tried to follow the line of this underground complex, and then, in a field nearby, we found these stones, apparently marking some sort of line in the field, and then this chamber, which you could see into. So, well, may as well go and have a look and see what's in it. And what is in this is just a very, very deep hole with water at the bottom. Right, so after this, we decided, why don't we try and follow the path of the tunnel going towards the River Tees? And up a further hill, we found this. This is some sort of inspection hatch, but it is formidably built. It has double layer walls. These outside ones that are made of local stone, but on the inside, there's a second layer of wall and a huge metal door on it. There is no way any kids are ever going to get into this. What will be inside? Well, I imagine that you could go downstairs to inspect the tunnel. It has an electricity supply, some very small windows in it, which people have tried to break through, but there would be no getting through this gap. Right, so let's go into the mile up the road and see what we find there. Another inspection chamber. This one is less vandalised, but it is just as strong. They don't want anyone getting into this and going down there. And I couldn't find any photos from any urban explorers that had got anywhere near getting into this. Right, so now we're going to go much further up. We're going to go about 10 miles towards the River Tees. And we're going to come out near Stanhope, in the middle of the countryside, where we find another inspection chamber near the abandoned railway line. This one is not as pretty. It's not got sandstone on it. But what there is here is a way to push water into the river weir, although it doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. Again, nobody around, so we were able to walk down and explore the complex itself. This is the river weir, and this is clearly where the water can be pushed out. We can see inside here that there is an inspection ladder, although it just goes straight into very clear, actually, water. 
Interestingly, while we were here, we got to see the inspection train running on the old Weardale line with what looked like a digger that could run on rails as a tree had fallen over the line further up, and they must have been going to clear it. They do intend to properly reopen this line, apparently, but they've been saying that for the last 30 years. We also noticed this communications tower for computer control from elsewhere. Right, time to get travelling again, now down to the River Tees near Mickleton, we find where the tunnel finally exits and feeds into the river. But that's not all we find here, because this appears to have at one point been a manned complex with a lot of underground facilities. So let's explore what's still standing. What we found first were these abandoned cabins that were well and truly smashed up and at the end of their life. We didn't go in them, but we took some footage through the windows. We don't know if these had anything to do with the tunnel complex, but they're right next to it. But after this, here's where things get interesting, because we found a tunnel entrance with a big welded up door on it, but you could look inside it, and it had an amazing echo. Have a listen. Whoa! This is some echo! Then, after this rather alarming looking sign, we see the final inspection chamber and beyond the gates that are designed to fill the river tees with extra water. There was some CCTV in the trees, but we think this might have been to protect some thoroughbred horses rather than the tunnel itself. So we reach the final inspection chamber with another aerial, presumably for computer control, up on the roof there and a short walk down to the River Tees. Interestingly, the tunnel was recently awarded a very large grant to bring it up to specification for modern use, so it obviously does still have a viable purpose, but when it was last used I have no idea. I've not been able to find any footage of any of these outlets being used, but maybe with this video some people will give us some extra information. So then, this is it. 21 miles from here to the River Tyne. But what's inside it, and how slippy is this ground? Another ladder to nowhere. I hope you enjoyed that explore of the longest tunnel in the UK and thank you for subscribing if you've done so. I've put some links at the bottom of the video for a couple of the pictures that I used and for more information about exploring and tracing the history of the tunnel. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one.